Crams are fucking expensive. Get out of my face. <laughs> anyway. Really? I did not know that. <laughs> Honestly, filmed this. This is now the third time, and it's going to be the last time because, oh my god, I'm not having much luck. So, as I explained in my last vlog, I think I explained it. My camera is broken. I've got an Olympus pen. And you flip it down so you can kind of see if you're in focus and what you're doing and all the rest of it. And that's completely broken. So it was green before. I could kind of see that it was on me. Now there's no screen at all. So I'm doing this completely blind. I'm sure there's some way that you can uh, connect it to the computer so I can see, but I'm really not that tech savvy. So the first time I filmed, I was completely out of focus for the whole time. It was literally just focus behind me. So I'm just a blur which maybe is a good thing. And then I tried it again yesterday, the second time, and I was literally like this close to the camera. You could basically just see my eyes the whole time, which was quite funny actually. So I've just switched up the lens, so I'm really hoping this works. If not, I think I'm just gonna use the out-focus one because I just can't be doing this again. So, welcome back to my channel. It's a shambles, yes it is. This is my vlog for my trimester, <laughs> trimester two uh, pregnancy, there's like a cat hair somewhere as well. Trimester two pregnancy diaries. So this is what I've been getting up to for the last few months, how I've been feeling, how my body's changed, thoughts, feelings, and all the rest of it. So I hope you enjoy. Oh, it is bright. So, I didn't manage to film any of the actual journey yesterday because it is a long ass journey to get to the Silly Isles. This is a good old schlep, but look at the view. This is my little bedroom window. Oh, and there is a lot of sun. nice day this is the first morning and I think um, this is apparently gonna be the nicest day because we are due a lot of rain so we're gonna make the most of it and go walking oh I've got wet socks now I wish I could tell you this is like our second day and this is what we're doing today, but I'm actually home. I didn't manage to film anything and 
this is why I'm a terrible vlogger, blogger, vlogger, blogger person. I filmed on the first day and then to be honest, we just didn't do much. It wouldn't have been that exciting to kind of show you what we were up to. We went walking every day. It's absolutely beautiful on the island of Briar. We were literally just eating and relaxing, reading and watching scary movies in the evening and going to bed at like 9 p.m. So there wouldn't have been much to report. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna put some pictures up of the holiday. I took a load of pictures um, as I kind of blabber on and quickly tell you about it. But yeah, a lot of people did ask me because a lot of people don't know where the Scilly Isles are. They're literally, it's a 15 minute flight from New Quay. It's like a two, one and a half, two hour um, boat trip from Land's End. I think it might be two or actually might be three hours, but it's worth flying just because uh, of ease. I think there's five or six islands that you can stay on. So we stayed on the smallest one, it's called Briar. It's absolutely beautiful. I think there's only like 40 people who live there all year round. No cars, it's really, really tiny, as in you can walk around the whole perimeter of the island in like an hour and a half. There's one pub, there's one hotel, and there's one shop, which is literally a tiny little post office with kind of like your food essentials. So if you need anything more, you can go over to the main island, which is called St. Mary's, and they've got kind of like your normal co-ops and, you know, a few clothes shops and things like that, but it's a pretty chilled back way of life. And I feel very, very chilled out, which is the main aim of the whole holiday. So it was beautiful. Uh, would really recommend honestly if you look into like a kind of staycation-y kind of holiday where you don't want to fly or travel too far um, Scilly Isles are amazing and the island of Briar is the one I'm in the mood for lamb curry and it's really weird because it's oh my god it's like shiny it's the heat wave at the moment. I think it's 28 or 29 today. It's gone insane, the weather. And I don't know why, but when it's really hot outside, I fancy like really spicy hot food. This is just a chill weekend, a couple of days on my own with the cats. Little good looking. Look at that one. Keeps looking up. And then I'll put the camera on him. Hello. Come on, look up there. Oh, look at those. That tail. Oh, there he is. Look at your eyes, Hermie. Tom is away. He's at a golf tournament. He messaged me. He left at like seven this morning. And I messaged him to ask him something, and he said he answered it, but he said I'm trying to concentrate. I'm on the golf course, so. I probably won't hear from him till tomorrow. That's Herman's favourite spot when I'm in the kitchen. Oh, he's just coming in for my little sleep. She'll probably plonk herself down. Right in the way. Oh, here, yeah, Lily. <laughs> but yeah, that's Herman's little spot right at the top there on the fish tank. So you can oversee proceedings when I'm cooking. Just checking, I'm doing it right. So it's ready. Ugh, curries always look a little bit shitty, don't they? But it's really tasty and it's really fucking spicy. I put too much uh, in. We've got Papa Dom's. I'm not gonna lie, I've already eaten two, so I've got six for myself. Papa Dom's are my favourite thing in the world, though. They're so tasty. Look at them. I made some rice dip, mint dip. Obviously, not the mango chutney. And I've Cherry Tango. Oh, this is going to be a Friday night feast. So it is Wednesday today and it's finally come the scan, the second scan, which is known as the 20 week scan. It's got a fancy name like Anatomy and something scan. So yeah, I'm feeling quite nervous. I just hope everything's okay and everything's developing well. So I will update you when I get back. Okay, so we've just got back from the scan. All is okay, everything was really good. Um, I think I've got to say, because I was quite rushed before I left, that we did want to find out the sex of the baby. 
A lot of people said to wait because it helps you, literally, it helps you give birth because you just want to know what it is. But both me and my husband kind of wanted to know. Everything was good and it was actually a lot better behaved than the first scan. If you remember, it was in the wrong position, misbehaving. I had to jump around. I had to go for walk, like three different walks and all this to get the baby into position. All the measurements were really good and she was getting them all. They do like the brain, check the heart, check all the chambers in the heart, um, do all the measuring, check the spine. That was all fine, which is amazing. Then right at the end, I was kind of like, come on, I just want to know if it's a boy or a girl. Um, and it was moving perfectly. It was moving all like really kind of active and lovely. And then when it came to the bit of finding out the sex, it had its legs crossed. No joke, I had to do start getting up and jumping, start jumping, trying to get it to move. And we don't know the sex. She said it looks like something, but she really wasn't sure. I'm a bit disappointed, but do you know what? I'm just more happy that everything is okay with the measurements and the growth and everything. So that to me was more of a relief. Yeah, it's a bit strange because uh, I didn't really want the surprise. But anyway, I've got to rush off again. I've got to unpack the shopping and everything, but just wanted to update you with that. embarrassing hat. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of my face. <laughs> it is Monday the 14th of May and we're going pram shopping. But more importantly, we're going to Shake Shack after. Well, you maybe get it down and have a little wheel of it. Oh, yeah. Is there a front brake on? I thought so. I can't move it. There you go. Flip oh. it up. Flip it up? Yeah. Okay. And the back wheels don't. No, it won't. Okay. It's just the front ones. So I've just filmed, I can't 
can't even see what it looked like. I've just been to the doctors. Not just now. I must look ridiculous. Uh, this morning I went to the doctors uh, for my 24 week checkup. It's only the second time I've actually been to the doctors in the whole time. So it was quite nice to touch base. Um, just had everything checked, the heartbeat monitored, heartbeat was all good, I'm all fine. And yeah, that's about it really. Oh, they gave me this, which was quite exciting. Got this, which is some scary looking pack, labour information from Emma's diary. Um, and this is quite fun because I don't have any of this kind of crap, you know. Um, so it's got in there you've got some hand mattes no, which is kind of fucking scary uh, how many did you get in there? one? oh no it's four nappies for a newborn I've never even touched a nappy in my life I'm not going to open them now oh, that's scary I wouldn't even know what to do I hope they have instructions somewhere oh my god there's no instructions how am I supposed to know how to nappy up um and then it's got some other kind of baby stuff. This I know only because I actually have one of these in my kit because um, it's very good for dry skin, lips, uh, skin prep and everything. So that's a little makeup artist thing that we use in our kits. Um, what's this? A little baby wash. Probably just use that for me. Something from Fairy. I don't think that's even... I don't know what that is. I think that's just a normal thing. Um, some wipes. Handy for my kitchen. Yep. And then it's basically some kind of coupon y stuff and information, which is quite nice. Um, yeah, I don't know. Next appointment is midwife, which not for another month or so, it's actually quite a while. And I'm hoping they're going to start doing the. Um, telling me about stuff like what happens in childbirth and all that because I feel so so unprepared I've only had two midwife appointments so far and they've just literally been to do what the doctor just did is basically to kind of check your weight check your blood pressure like a blood sample but there's been no actual talk of what's going to happen which is what I really want to know Herman's like licking himself and he's so cute I can't stop looking at him. So I'm going away for a few days um, to visit my friends in the Cotswolds. It's a place called Lakes by You. It's basically like a gated development place, estate. Um, it's like a posh centre parks. There's a spa, there's little pop-up restaurants. It's just this really cool place. I'll link it below so you can like check out the website and stuff.
pretty miserable weather actually. We're just gonna have a little quick wander about. So yeah. Whoop, whoop. Waiting for Tom. He's gone to put his waterproof on because he's such a puss. And here he comes. Oh god, look at my forehead. I need Botox so bad. Go on then. Yeah. actually today so I think I'm in my third trimester or it might be tomorrow I was just cleaning up some dishes in the sink and I know when people say your back twinges I've just never had anything wrong with my back or I've never had any back pain or anything like literally it did twinge I was washing dishes and um I literally had to, I couldn't even stand up. I was on the floor, on the on my side, pretty much how I am now. Um, yeah, and the pain is literally crippling. I can hardly walk. I can't really stand up for more than five minutes at a time. And it's, yeah, it's like nauseating pain. I feel quite sick when it gets bad. So I called the doctor yesterday and obviously I couldn't walk so I couldn't go to the doctors so they called me and it's quite common I think in pregnancy because of the weight balance and stuff and your back overcompensates and all this nonsense. So yeah, um, I'm just kind of resting up, I can't work. Um, and then I woke up this morning so it's Wednesday today. No, it's not, it's Tuesday today. Yeah, it's Tuesday today and um, this just seems like it's almost worse. So I'm going to the doctors in about 15 minutes to see what they say. I just don't think there's anything they can do except rest, but it's just, it's just so frustrating because in my mind, obviously, I feel absolutely fine. It's just my body will not work and I have so much to do. Just back from the doctors and yeah, can't really do anything about it except go on something quite strong painkiller wise, which I just can't be bothered to do, um, which is, he said, for the best anyway, if you kind of can try and get through it. So I'm just going to literally lie down for the rest of the day. <clears throat> and just rest and put lots of like heat patches on and just try and kind of relax and get some sleep and be really bored. I'm just sitting down right at the end because as I kind of told you probably a few times I'm sometimes not very good at bringing out my camera and videoing and filming everything. I've written a list of things down that um, I need to just talk about which I might have touched on through the vlog but I just wanted to kind of talk about a few things. First of all I've written down midwife, uh, doctor, so all that kind of thing, my appointments. I've only seen the midwife I think 
three, two or three times. And now obviously I'm six months, over six months now. And I'm feeling a little bit kind of, I wanted a little bit more interaction maybe. I thought midwife would be maybe showing you or telling you a bit more about what's happening and what's going to happen. Um, but so far it's just been more like blood tests and listening to the heartbeat and weight and stuff like that so i've had no kind of real kind of information i guess from them so i feel a little bit lost still like i was explaining in my first one i'm completely out of my depth in anything baby related and pregnancy related so i've just bought a book what's it called i think it's like pregnancy day by day so i've literally just been reading that and then going on the internet and kind of learning stuff through that way and asking friends and stuff like that i just feel a bit lost to be honest still but maybe the midwife i don't know will become more frequent in the next trimester um, and i'll start getting the kind of hands-on you know nappy stuff what's going to happen in the birth all this kind of thing and like how you look after a baby <laughs> i just don't know so that's how i'm feeling about that and on from like the kind of midwife thing i started thinking about doing nct classes which again i didn't really know about nct my friends told me about it and basically told me it's just a way you have to pay for it it's quite expensive it's 250 pounds for i think it's three half days three classes it's basically a way of just connecting with other um pregnant mums to be pregnant ladies in your area so after you obviously give birth there's going to be a bunch of you who are all in a similar position with similar age babies so you can kind of meet up and do all this coffee and all that so she basically described to me as like paying for friends initially i was just like oh, no it's not for me i'm not really like that but i think if i'm not going to learn much more in any other ways then i'm just going to go and do nct because apparently you do learn a little bit more hands-on stuff uh, from those classes but that's something i'd really like to hear your feedback on because i did send a tweet out and it was very much 50 50 on whether you should bother doing nct or not um talk about the scan i obviously brought it up in the vlog um we still don't know the gender wasn't basically 100 percent at the scan so we are probably i kind of want to find out now it's kind of we did want to find out in the first place and we did think maybe it's just not meant to be and we'll have it as a surprise but i just want to know so i think what we're going to do is probably just pay for a private scan um in the next kind of month maybe and that'll be a nice way to just check up if the baby's okay and also to find out sex health and sickness wise i haven't been sick hardly at all this trimester it's been so much better than the first one where i was feeling absolutely rotten for like probably one month straight had a couple of bouts of sickness but literally just very quick kind of feelings of nauseousness nauseousness whatever um that's gone away really quickly and i've been feeling a lot better in myself as in mentally and physically i think that's completely normal everyone was saying that what the first trimester is really hard and the second one does get better which it did i went back to the gym again i started doing very light workouts in the gym i've started swimming uh, which has been really good because it's obviously a non-weight bearing kind of exercise yeah i've just been feeling a lot more active going out for a lot more walks seeing people more and just enjoying my life a lot more so it's all been a lot more positive in that respect the only problem I've had was the back pain, my back problem that I had last week, which I was telling you about. And that has got a lot better. It's still there. And this is now, it's exactly a week, I think, today, actually. And it is very normal during pregnancy because your weight's obviously in different places and you're carrying a lot more. So it is quite common to put your back out, which is what I did. And I was getting spasms and it was really, really sore. So that's got slowly better. I've just been looking after myself taking it easy and just doing some stretching and stuff so that's the only kind of bad thing i guess health wise um that's happened to me in this whole trimester my body in general um changes in my body i was moaning about how my boobs were getting really sore and heavy i've got no soreness in my boobs at all they've stopped expanding and growing i think but the nipples i got warned about this nipple situation they get a little bit bigger and apparently they go really dark but that hasn't happened yet but my nipples have definitely got bigger sorry too much information but i'm just going to talk about what happens and also I haven't heard this before, but when I sneeze, I basically piss my pants. Not like a full piss in my pants, but a little bit of pee comes out pretty much every time I sneeze. So I'm having to practice my pelvic floor already. I thought this stuff happened after you gave birth, but I think it's just apparently it's because of the more of the weight is sitting down there that you just, yeah, 
So that's been happening. And I have to talk about this, the baby on board badge. Now, this is a badge that you put on somewhere visible before you get on uh, London transport, particularly the tube, because of how busy it gets. And I didn't think much of this. Like I was a bit like, oh, I'm excited. I get to wear a baby on board badge and I get to sit down when it's really busy. Definitely got it in the first trimester. You go online and you just order it, or you can go to your local tube station and pick one up. And I didn't really think much of it. I just remember Googling like at what stage is normal to start wearing it. And I stumbled into Mum's Net and it was a weird forum of talking about the baby on board badge and there was a lot of negativity surrounding it which i'd never even thought about hadn't even crossed my mind and a lot of people kind of saying someone called it a bragging on board badge like as in you're bragging because you've got a baby and you're pregnant and you can get pregnant which again i've never even <laughs> that's not crossed my mind before and then some other lady was like i was standing no problem when i was eight months pregnant and you know you can stand kind of thing just so i just held off and held off to wear it because i thought oh i'm just i just feel a bit strange now about it and it kind of just got in my head a little bit and i thought as well like when you get on the tube in london uh, there's four seats next to the exit entrance which um, are for people who are less abled, people uh, with young babies, pregnant ladies and uh, elderly people. So these seats uh, are the ones that usually people will stand up for pregnant ladies and you can sit down. Um, but what also kind of got in my head was, A, I feel a bit funny the fact that I can stand up, I'm not less abled, I'm just pregnant, um, so I don't necessarily need that seat. And then I started thinking, actually, someone might be less abled in that seat and you just don't know about it. So I don't want to, I just overthought it all. And I started thinking, imagine if I get on as a pregnant person and someone less able is sat there, it's going to make them feel really awkward and it's just going to be not very nice. It's just a lot of stupid thoughts going around in my head. Maybe not stupid, but I just started really kind of thinking about it and... And, and like if I should even be wearing it. So it's got to obviously six months now and I've only just started putting the badge on basically when it's rush hour, when I, when I can't avoid traveling in rush hour and it's more so that people don't squash me because I'm not, I can still stand up. There's days when I finish work, I've been still on my feet all day and I'm really, really tired and I would love to sit down and it has happened a few times when I've gotten people have stood up and it's really really nice but I do it more just so people are aware I guess that I'm pregnant um, and don't squash me because if you've ever traveled I live on the central line if you travel rush hour on central line you're literally every part of your body is squashed by another part of someone else's body it's quite horrible at the best of times let alone in the summer oh yeah I'd like to know your thoughts because I think I think that I'm being really stupid about it but I just wish I'd never come across that forum which kind of was shaming people for wearing the badge and it just made me think that I was being weak by wearing it which I think is ridiculous and I don't think anyone should feel that way um, but I think the more I'm gonna go on the more I'm gonna get to give less of a shit about it to be honest last thing I want to touch on is the baby shopping situation um, preparation and what I've been doing for it which uh, the answer is absolutely nothing I've literally bought nothing as yet. So we are now six months and I think four or five days today. And I've got a friend who's pregnant and I think she's due a week before me. And a month ago, she had got the nursery done, the full wardrobe. There's been gender reveal parties. I mean, she's living her best pregnancy life. And I'm here thinking, I really need to up my game or something because I haven't done anything. I haven't felt the need to go out shopping or anything, which I think maybe I'm being really strange, but I'm just going to go at my own pace. I've got three more months and to be honest, I've still been working and just trying to keep afloat with everything else. Um, and when I take my maternity leave, I'm going to take it a little bit earlier. I'm just going to have enough time. I think I'm going to have five or six weeks before to kind of do all that stuff. We are actually buying our pram today, which I'll feature in the next uh, my last trimester diaries obviously i took you pram shopping when we went it was just me and my husband literally none of, neither of us had a clue about prams or what you're looking for what's good what brand to go for um so we went to john lewis and mother care in westfield for like half a day and just started trying out and just looking and just 
seeing what we like the look of and how it felt basically and then going online and looking at reviews and also prams are fucking expensive i did not know that big investment things are what we're going to get first and just kind of get that out of the way and then the nursery is the next kind of investment thing we're going to do because where we are at the moment we've got our bedroom we've got this room which could be a bedroom but it's my makeup room and then we've got a spare room for guests so the guest room is going to turn into the nursery and we've got to redecorate the whole thing the people who lived here before us obviously had a little girl and it is pink like really pink bright pink even if we we're having a girl i wouldn't want it to be pink i'm not really one of those who like pink for a girl blue for a boy so what we're going to do is we're just going to strip all the pink, repaint it something really nice, neutral, pastel-y kind of colours. We're going to get some curtains made and just kind of some new pieces of furniture, uh, cot, and all these other little things that apparently you need. I really want to go and buy clothes and stuff, um, and I'm looking forward to doing that, but yeah, I'm just going to save that for a little bit later. So, thank you for sticking with me. It's probably been a bit of a long blabber right at the end when I've been trying to kind of go through everything. Um, and stay tuned for the next one. I will obviously be bringing out my trimester three a little bit earlier, probably about four weeks before my due date because I'm going to be editing nothing when I've got this thing in my arms. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I will be bringing you a little bit more of other content in between these pregnancy thingies. What's the other thing? Oh, give me a thumbs up if people don't even listen to that, do they, anyway? <laughs>